My book was inspired by something my grandfather said to me back in 2008 now. Um, he had been a prisoner of war in Poland for five years and he very much lived the rest of his life in the shadow of that experience. Um, he didn't talk very much about what he went through, but in his later years he did open up more and more. And I started to try and encourage him to write a memoir of, of his experiences. And one day when I was encouraging him, he gave me a very specific response as to why he didn't want to write a memoir. He said, why would I record my story? It would just be one long tale of humiliation. And I had never seen captivity in that way before. I had admired my grandfather for what he'd been through. I was proud of him, yet he was ashamed. And um, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know how it felt to be a prisoner of war, how it felt to be in captivity. And I realised no one had written that history, so I wrote my book. 3rd of January. Mud worse than ever. Almost unbelievable. Where it hasn't been churned up by feet or tractors, there is a slimy scum that makes, well, one sick to look at. There is no sign of this mild weather changing. Those who were in captivity in the last war say that this place is rock bottom. They never met anything to compare with it. Somehow, I feel more content in this mud state. I think it gives one a feeling of participation in the unpleasantness and discomfort of war. My book, Captives of War, is mainly based upon the personal narratives that British prisoners of war wrote. So their diaries, letters and logbooks. And because I wanted to get as close as possible to the experience of captivity as these men lived through it, I only used those narratives that were written at the time of the Second World War. And I've also used other papers to uh, contextualise what they wrote in their diaries. So psychiatric research and reports and uh, reports written by the International Committee of the Red Cross, whose delegates were able to go into the camps and visit prisoners and see the conditions. 27th of December. This temporary feeding on an almost pre-war scale is responsible for a lot of benefits, which include warmth generally during the day, good tempers, higher spirits, better comradeship, but it is also responsible for one horrible disadvantage, and that is overloaded latrines, which are blocked in any case by the frost. The Garden City 50-seater is, I'm told, filled up to the seats. Ours on the Lagerstrasse is frozen up and blocked, as is the one in the canteen block. We have two at the bottom of our staircase, which at the moment are all right and which are used by 170-odd who live on the staircase, as well as many visitors who have no accommodation. I think one of the really surprising things was how much uh, British prisoners of war talked about their loved ones at home in captivity. We often think of the captivity experience as if these men lived in some sort of barbed wire vacuum, physically cut off from the outside world. And of course they were, but mentally they were constantly breaching that perimeter, either through fantasies, which allowed them to return to their loved ones at home and be back on Sydney Street, or through the letters and parcels that arrived into the camps, which brought their, their wives, mothers, children into captivity to join them. My first entry will be a record of good wishes to mother, father and Claire at home, and to Mervyn and Clavel, wherever they may be. Pray God we will be a complete family on the 1st of January next year. Is it too much to ask that as a complete and reunited family we celebrate the raising of the curtain at the start of 1943 together? Good luck to you and God bless. My name's Alexis Penny Castagli. And my father was Major A.T. Castagli, a prisoner of war, 
who is famous for the first embroidery he did in captivity on the 9th of July, 1941, when he embroidered his details of capture and round the edge he embroidered in a narrow border in Morse code Hitler three and a half times and put it up on the wall of all the four prisons he was in until 1945 and his captors never noticed. And I was incredibly touched when Claire asked whether she could quote my father's diary in this wonderful book. One of the things she does in this book is try to understand the emotional lives of men actually experiencing captivity. And she really emphasizes the way that imagination and emotions play a big role in survival. I think Claire's done an amazing job to actually pick out the, the, the if you like, the bits of detail to actually, you know, cause she would have had to have drawn through an awful lot of material mm. to uh, work out what to put in the book. It's something that's been on my mind because I didn't take enough advantage of while he was alive. Or it was, it was almost an unwritten and unsaid thing. We weren't really allowed to ask too many questions as well. Um, and I know that I've, no, I've learned more over the last few months just how much material mum has got stuffed away in the garage. And basically, I just want to go and find some of it. Yeah. yeah.